Hello and welcome to Musings and Monologues. Recently, subaltern history is being celebrated and tom-tomed by people at large, academics and common janta because it presents the history of lives of ordinary people, people who do not depend on the monarch or the society that the monarch seeks to create during his times of victory, of celebration, of battles lost or won. It is the tale of individuals. Subaltern literature, unfortunately, has not occupied that hallowed space. It is still largely ignored by mainstream media and at best is published as a private enterprise. Pamphlets, handwritten or printed, and put up as fancy decoration in local railway stations at most. There is no advertising or media hype to surround its launch, except maybe for the chance discovery by an academic of substance, an academic who recognizes the work of lasting value and who brings it out into the mainstream. The majority of the literature spoken in the subaltern language is ignored and thrown into the dustbins of history. It is essentially the other voice. It is meant to perish in obscurity. And at best, it can be celebrated as this insignificant marginal voice of the marginalized people. There is no able translation because there are no able academics who probe del and delve deeply into those localized dialects of language to actually find and give you their works in their worthiness, in their total quality. It is counter-narrative that has attracted the eyes of the ubiquitous TV anchors of today. The quaintness and the otherness of this voice is celebrated at television debates where these people come in and create and actually mouth gaffes and faux pas. They commit faux pas because they are not attuned to the age of the electronic media. It is far beyond them. Their weakness and otherness is celebrated. But if you look at it more carefully, it is actually they are presented like creatures from a zoo. The divide between us and them has become substantial. And this us and them, as we discussed it yesterday, is not in this context about the majority and minority religious community, but about the majority tribe and the minority tribe, the tribe that does not have a voice to articulate itself in an urban environment. These writers of subaltern literature, the true seclusion over the cacophony of advertising blitzkrieg. Such literature has to recede to an internal space. The writers actually are very hesitant, shy interlocutors of social change and of substance. They only concentrate on the very few that is their target audience the kind of people who are illiterate and who can yet savor the fathoms and fables in their native tongue, in their native knowledge. The constant attempt is to fit them into the mainstream and that is what creates a travesty. The Santal poet placed in a salon in Paris or placed in an elite upper club in New York State New York City, that he becomes an object to gaze at, an object of exotic, erotic splendor. It is not them who are perceived as spewing mumbo-jumbo, figures from a circus. No need to make them famous. Only use them in festival India circuits as objects to be displayed. Objects like the handicraft produced by the same people is displayed 
in all the festival India circuits. This is something which has actually created the divide between the marginal people, between them and us. And this is reduced to have nots and have people who have, but it is not so simple. They are not Google worthy. These people are not Google worthy. They do not adhere to the traditional notions in which literature is celebrated. Their literature is meant to be obscure, is meant to only satisfy their needs. There is no need, there is no pressing need to actually dig out this literature and present it in a wide uh, amorphous mass because it is not like cinema. It is a very marginalized activity, an activity which can actually gain significance only when we actually learn to speak and understand the intricacies and the efficacies of their language. It is very culture specific, that language. That language needs to be probed in for first to actually then translate that language in the language which is understood by the mainstream in India and present them as works of substance. Till such time, we wish and hope that such literature remains where it is splendid in its isolation, splendid in its actually creating a world which is completely different from the world and being of the mainstream. That is a world we need to celebrate at a time when it is suitable to figure out the nuances of language, to figure out the nuances of that culture. Till such time, I wish that we remain satisfied with what is being pandered in our regular dose of literature, which in itself is becoming a marginalized activity in today's day and age. Till then, please think about this and do post your comments. I look forward to your insight into this phenomena of subaltern literature. Please do write and let us be enriched by your experience. Thank you and have a wonderful day ahead.